in this, in this way. Lord God, we hope that no matter where we are, you hear us as one voice, lifting up our hearts, lifting up our minds, lifting up all of our concerns and our joys to you, uh, our Lord. Lord, we give you thanks for everyone who is, is doing their best to, uh, to help keep others healthy. We are thanking you today, Lord, for the chance that you've given us uh, even through this, to maybe connect one-on-one -on -one with uh, other people that we somehow don't usually reach out to, that we might uh, grow uh, connection, even in this time of separation. I thank you, Lord, today for the, the weather that you've given us, uh, that we might be able to get out and, and not be so, so housebound, uh, that we might be able to get out and walk and enjoy creation, even as we separate from one another, we might feel the sun on our face. Lord God, I pray for those who are feeling lonely today. It, it makes sense. But help us all to remember that we are not alone. In fact, we're all together in the struggle, all together in, uh, in the chaos that this has brought about. We are all together also, under your gaze, and in your community, your family. So Lord God, help us to feel your presence in our lives and in our homes. Help us to feel your strength as we sometimes feel hopeless. Help us to feel your peace of mind when we're not sure what the future is going to hold. You are our God. We are your children. And so we come to you today, humbly, filled with thanksgiving for all that you are doing and all you have done in this world. I thank you, and I pray in Jesus' name. Hear me now, and all who are watching us, Lord, hear us as we lift up the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen.
going to be looking at another psalm. Uh, psalm 23 is the, the psalm in our lectionary for this week. Uh, I think it's particularly appropriate uh, for what's going on in the world that we look at this much-beloved psalm today as well. So here are these words, Psalm 23, a psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen and amen. This morning we are looking at uh, another one of our psalms. We have been, if you've been with us over the last few weeks, we've kind of been walking through a Lenten journey through the psalms. We started with Psalm 121, which was a psalm of encouragement on the journey. It was a, it was a pilgrim psalm uh, that was recited during the journey to, uh, to Jerusalem to worship. It was a psalm that encouraged us to look ahead, see the problems, the adversities that we will be facing, and to continue on, even uh, in spite of them. Last Sunday we heard Psalm 95, which was one of the liturgical psalms that was recited by the pilgrims or the worshippers as they entered into and moved through the temple. This week we're going to be looking at, again, Psalm 23. This is one of the most loved, probably the most uh, uh, remembered, the most memorized psalm of them all. Um, and I think one of the reasons that this psalm is so loved is the intimacy of the relationship with God that it portrays. It reflects a peace of mind that is, I think, as pure as it is complete. And it's complete because it is based on nothing but the faithfulness of God. In the world today, that kind of peace of mind is, unfortunately, in short supply. So much of our lives are being placed on hold as we self-segregate, as businesses and churches tell their folks to stay home and we aren't supposed to touch one another anymore. Nobody likes change, even little change. But everyone is having to change their lives in pretty significant ways. And if we lose perspective, it's easy to fall into the trap of worry. Or worse, panic. But one thing I think we need to keep in mind is that this is not going to last forever. We already have reports of medicines that are knocking out the virus in various parts of the world. And it's just a matter of time before we come out the other side of this darkest valley. The key is to realize that God doesn't abandon his people during hard times. He never has. He walks with us. He walks with us through the darkest valleys, just as he walked with his people Israel through the wilderness that they went through. And that's the foundation of the psalm today. Throughout their history, the people of Israel have lived within the memory of God's provision and guidance through their times of difficulty. All of their worship, all of their lives, center on the covenant relationship of God and his people. David plays on that covenant, that covenant relationship, when he begins this psalm with, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In the Old Testament, the shepherd imagery is often used for the relationship of God with a group of people, the flock that he guides with his rod and protects with his staff. In Ezekiel 34, 31, we hear this, You are my sheep, the sheep of my pasture, and I am your God. 
declares the Lord God. The Lord is the shepherd of his people, and he shepherds all of us as well. We are all his flock, all his community. But you know, right now it's hard to feel that sense of community. So what is interesting here for us this morning is that David doesn't write, the Lord is our shepherd. He writes, the Lord is my shepherd. He leads me in the right ways to go. David takes the covenant communal relationship that he was a part of and he internalizes it. He personalizes it. Just as Israel remembers God's guidance of his people, David is remembering here God's role in his personal life. David is remembering that through the hardest times of his life, God was right there with him. Just as he's right here with us, just as he's right there with you in your darkest valleys, offering you comfort, offering you hope. Now, there are all kinds of valleys that we walk through with our shepherd. This one's only the most recent. Even without the virus, we, we walk through valleys of pain or sickness, valleys of unemployment or poverty, valleys of unfulfilled dreams, and yes, even valleys of death of loved ones. So they, these are all valleys we walk through, and they're all valleys that we can't control. But honestly, control has always been an illusion. The last week or so has only been a reminder of that. In James 4.13 we read, Now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to this or to that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this and that. If we had 300 million test kits and were able to know the infection status of every single American, we would still be living in a world that doesn't promise tomorrow, much less a comfortable tomorrow. That hasn't changed. So our perspective must be that the same hope that has been bringing us through our lives before COVID-19 is the same hope that will bring us through life with it. The hope that comes and that brings us through is the hope that comes from remembering that God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in shall not perish, but have eternal life. And the hope that comes from remembering that is the same hope that comes from remembering that the valleys have a beginning and an end. The psalmist David doesn't say, when I go to take up residence in the darkest valley, he says, as I walk through the darkest valley. And that means we can have hope that the clouds will eventually disappear and the skies will again be clear. God has always been faithful. And God will continue to be faithful to the ends of this and beyond. We just have to get there. The question is how? The answer is together. Paul told, told the, the Philippians, let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. And he told the Galatians, bear one another's burdens. And so fulfill the law of Christ. So what does that mean for us now? Well, it means looking out for each other. It means, buy, it means buying one package of toilet paper instead of three, so that other people can have some too. It means not hoarding so much food that others go hungry, because the shelves are empty by the time they get there. And yes, it means changing how we interact with each other, so we can limit the number of people who get sick until the medical system catches up. It means making decisions based not just on what's good for us, but also on what is good for all of us. It may not be easy. It may not be pleasant. 
but it is one way to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ, which is the righteousness to which the psalmist tells us God is leading us. We're told in Psalm 23 that God is walking with us through the darkest valleys. Maybe we, by following God's lead and being the body of Christ that we are supposed to be, we can shine a little light into the valleys of others, just as God shines light into ours. Join me. Join me as we bear one another's burdens. Join me as we fulfill the law of Christ. The law that says simply, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. Together, we will walk through the darkest valley and come out the other side. We pray with you. Almighty God, thank you again. Thank you again for this day. We thank you for joining us in our joy, in our grief, meeting us in our suffering. We confess to you, Lord, that we are uh, anxious, we're confused, we're sad about everything that's going on in the world. Our hearts are troubled, our spirits are downcast, but you have given us your perfect love, and that love casts out fear. And so today, Lord, we take a step of faith, a faith in you that transcends all understanding. Lord God, we, we pray that you will uh, be with us no matter where we are scattered, that you will help us to feel connected to one another and to you during this time. Help fix our minds on your beauty and your goodness and help us fix our lives on doing your will and walking with you the paths of righteousness. Deliver us from fear. Bring us to comfort and peace of mind that only comes from relationship with you in Jesus our Christ. We pray this thing in his name, Jesus. Amen and amen. Have a great week. I don't see you on Zoom or around town uh, in the coming days. I'll see you next Sunday right here. God bless.